Good evening, it's 8 o'clock. The top headlines tonight, the first warning signals. India's active cases are beginning to rise again. In Maharashtra and Mumbai, the rise in cases in the last four to five days. This rise of cases in key states like Kerala, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh is coming as vaccination rates are dipping. The Delhi Chief Minister says schools will stay shut till all are vaccinated. And Team India hit by the UK's COVID wave. Wicketkeeper batsman Rishabh Pant is positive. Team support staff Dayanand Garani is also positive. Well, Rishabh was at Euro matches as the team won a break before the upcoming test series. Team India is fully vaccinated and Pant is asymptomatic, expected to rejoin the team for the test series. The Prime Minister launches the UP campaign six months before Assembly elections. He is in his constituency, Varanasi, uh, for the first time after the second wave, launches a series of projects. He also praises the Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister for the handling of COVID in UP, saying it was unparalleled. Strong reactions coming in to the Prime Minister's praise of UP's COVID response. The Chief Justice's strong comments on the sedition law, saying that it was a colonial law used by the British to silence Mahatma Gandhi. Is it still necessary 75 years later? Adding that the concern is a threat to the functioning of institutions. A leaked report of the National Human Rights Commission group which says that there should be a CBI probe into post poll Bengal violence adding that there was appalling apathy of the state and it seems that there is law of the ruler instead of rule of law. The West Bengal Chief Minister responds saying it is an attempt to defame Bengal. Over 50% of current BGP UP MLAs have more than two children. So UP wants a population law, but what about starting with their own MLAs? MLAs with over three kids meanwhile are now preaching population control. Trouble in the Maharashtra Alliance, the Congress state chief versus Sharad Pawar, the bickering grows as Nana Patole says Sharad Pawar is the remote control of the alliance. Meanwhile, a key meeting takes place between the Chief Minister Udav Thakre and Sharad Pawar. Well, let's begin with the latest COVID data and here's why we should be careful because there is early signs of a rise in cases. India had over 41,806 new cases in the last 24 hours. Now that's up 7.7%. The deaths are down at 581. Also, the recoveries, however, are down in the last 24 hours. The daily positivity rate is at 2.15%. That's less than 3% as it has been continuing for nearly a month. But here's what's the worrying sign in India's battle against COVID. Active cases have gone up by 2,095. While that's not much given the overall uh, population, this is the highest rise in active cases in over two months. In fact, since mid-May, active cases have risen only twice. Now, this is only one day. We hope it's an aberration and that the seven-day average continues to dip. But more rise in the days ahead could change all that. In fact, what the government and experts are now tracking is the R number or the reproduction number. This is an indicator of the spread of coronavirus cases, which has risen sharply in the past few weeks. But look at this comparison. As the R rate is rising, the vaccination rate is falling. And that's currently the only weapon India has against the spread of more infections. But let's just go across also to this is happening globally. And the United Kingdom is also seeing a huge rise in cases, over 40,000 cases, the same as India compared to our population. That's much, much more in the positivity rate. Now, Team India has been hit by the UK wave as wicketkeeper batsman Rishabh Pant has tested positive. Also, uh, team support staff Dayanand Garani has also tested positive. Well, Rishabh Pant had posted pictures of himself at Euro matches. The team, remember, won a three-week break before the test series, which begins in August. Team India, however, has been fully vaccinated to so the Board of Cricket Control. And Rishabh Pant himself is asymptomatic and recovering. He tested positive on the 8th. Hopefully, he'll be back to play before the test series begins. Rishabh Pant at a Euro match 15 days ago. BCCI confirms that he is asymptomatic COVID positive and has been in isolation for seven days. The wicketkeeper batsman tested positive for the Delta variant of COVID on 8th of July. The left-hander experienced a sore throat which led to a COVID test that returned positive. Pant along with the Indian cricket team were on a break of 20 days after the World Test Championship final. Others like Ravi Ashwin, Ravi Shastri, Jasprit Bumrah have also been spotted at various sporting events. 
they were on a break from the bio bubble and were allowed to experience life in United Kingdom. Throwdown specialist come Masir Dayanand Garani has also tested positive. So as we look at that COVID situation in the United Kingdom, which of course the whole, the both the men's and women's cricket team are there. Look at the cases per million of the population. The United Kingdom crossing 40,000, so has India. But the cases per million way, way higher for the UK than India. The big difference, however, is that over half of the population there is vaccinated, whereas India is just over 5%. So uh, that's the big uh, difference because even though UK cases are up so far, hospitalizations and deaths have remained relatively steady. Let's hope it stays like that. Well, coming back to what's happening in India, well, the rising trend now four states where weekly cases are up by over 100. Again, these are initially small numbers, but it's something we must be careful of. Kerala, which reported 15,500 cases in the last 24 hours, is up an additional 584 cases daily compared to the previous week. Similarly, Manipur, which had an all-time high for over 1,100 cases, is now seeing a rising trend of an additional 232 cases from last week. Madhya Pradesh is up by 179 over the previous week and Mizoram 120 cases. And in Maharashtra and Mumbai, the weekly average is still down. But the last four to five days, again, there's been a rise in cases, especially in Mumbai, where the number of buildings being sealed is also going up. Elsewhere in the state, there are some districts where the positivity rate is now over 10%. Crowds are back in Mumbai, even though it hasn't fully reopened. Worryingly, cases have seen an uptick, enough for more buildings to be sealed. On Monday and Tuesday, there were below 500 cases, but 635 cases on Wednesday. The number of buildings sealed by officials went up from 65 on Tuesday to 75 on Wednesday. BMC says more opening up of economy, reverse migration and mobility are the reasons cases are still high, although the positivity is still below 2%. As of now, there is nothing to worry, but in case if goes beyond a 2 or beyond 5 to say 2 if, I, if you ask me to say so. So in that case, uh, 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 it may be an alarming situation. But in the rest of the state, there are 10 districts which have a positivity above the state's average, most of them above the manageable level of 5%. These districts account for 92% of the active cases. Usme 8% 26 districts में है और 10% 92 districts में है सभी आपड़ों पर नजर रखे हुए हमें जहां relaxation देना है कहां relaxation नहीं देना है इसके बारे में माननीय मुख्यमंत्री जी को हम inputs देते रहते हैं The increased mobility and lesser regard for COVID protocols is like giving an invitation for third wave Experts have already warned about the third wave and hence Maharashtra government is also not in a mood right now to provide any further relaxation. In Mumbai with camera person Praveen Ji Rohit, this is Kurva Fitness for NDTV. And today, Delhi's chief minister has said that schools in Delhi won't reopen for now. He said experts are warning of a third wave, so schools will stay shut till everyone is vaccinated in Delhi. Jo internationally bhi trend dekh rahe ki third wave आएगी थर्ड वेव आएगी तो जब तक वैक्सीनेशन प्रोसेस कंप्लीट नहीं हो जाता हम अभी बच्चों के साथ रिस्क नहीं लेना चाहेंगे but of course, the long-term impact also needs to be looked at of children staying out of school which is why teachers and all school staff must be vaccinated on priority the other big political news, well, Prime Minister Modi, in a sense, launched his party's election campaign in Uttar Pradesh, where assembly polls will be held early next year. He was in his constituency, Varanasi, where he announced a series of new projects. He also praised the Chief Minister for Uttar Pradesh's handling of the COVID situation, saying it is unmatched, a statement which evokes strong reactions. The formal beginning of the BJP's big UP poll journey, six months ahead of the prestigious state elections. The PM was on his first visit to his Lok Sabha constituency Varanasi in over eight months. First time after the deadly COVID pandemic killed thousands in UP. 
In his constituency alone, the queues at cremation sites and hospitals spoke volumes of the human suffering. The PM had to dispatch trusted aide AK Sharma to manage affairs. The rest of UP saw horrifying scenes of floating corpses in rivers, medicine and oxygen shortage. Three months later, the Prime Minister could now be seen putting all of that behind and praised the Chief Minister for what he feels was exemplary handling of the situation. वहां कोरोना की दूसरी वेव को जिस तरह यूपी ने संभाला वो अभूतपूर्व है रिएक्शंस केम इन टू द प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स प्रेज ऑफ द सीएम्स हैंडलिंग मेरे को मेरे समय तो इतनी बुरी हालत स्थिति थी जैसे लगता है कि प्रशासन न शासन किसी का अंकुश ही नहीं है न डॉक्टरों पर न अस्पतालों में न किसी न मरीज का कोई सहयोग नहीं हो रहा था उसी कार्यकाल में मेरी वाइफ भी कोविड में एक्सपायर भी हो गई मैं चिल्लाता रहा डॉक्टरों से बोलता था लेकिन कोई कहीं से नहीं सहयोग मिला सच्चाई यह है कि कोविड में बिल्कुल भी कोई सुविधा नहीं मिली जो लोगों को कोविड होता था वो लोग डर के मारे अपना छिप जाते थे न कोई टेस्ट न कोई दवा न कोई डॉक्टर बहुत ही परेशानी हुई मोदी अनवेल दीरीज ऑफ डेवलपमेंट प्रोजेक्ट इन कंस्टिट्युएंसी द रुद्राक्ष कन्वेंशन सेंटर upgradation of the bhu hospital even the roro ferry service aaj up mein kanun ka raj hai mafia raj aur aatankwad jo kabhi bekabu ho rahe the un par ab kanun ka sikanja hai taking a cue bjp party leaders hit election mode office bearers of the bjp met today at the party office in lucknow on poll strategy The working committee of the BJP's UP wing will now meet on Friday. National President JP Nadda will be addressing the gathering virtually with the Chief Minister delivering the closing address. The opposition, which so far has been largely dormant regarding elections, insists this won't alter people's minds. Ganga Maiya ke kya hal hain? Ganga ka kinara kaisa hai? Ganga ke tato par kis tarike se कोरोना काल में लाशें दफनाई गईं, फिर उनका कफन नोचा गया उस पर भी प्रधानमंत्री जी बात करेंगे यूपी गोज टू पोल्स अर्ली नेक्स्ट ईयर एंड अ कॉन्शियस अटेम्प्ट इज बीइंग मेड बाय द बीजेपी टू चेंज द नैरेटिव। अ सीरीज ऑफ डेवलपमेंटल प्रोजेक्ट्स विल बी इनोग्रेटेड एंड अनवेल्ड इन द नेक्स्ट हंड्रेड डेज बट द प्लान ऑल्सो इंक्लूड ब्रिंगिंग इन द डिस्कोर्स अराउंड अ पॉपुलेशन कंट्रोल बिल बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट एन डी टीवी हमारे प्रणाम Well talking about UP's population control bill ironically UP's BJP MLAs are amongst the largest group who actually have more than two children in fact over 50% of BJP MLAs currently have more than two children ironically many of them who have between 3 4 6 children are also now advocating population control for others koi bhi apna dal ke padadhikari karyakarta nahi judega fir All these MLAs of the BJP led government in UP support the move to impose a two child rule and they have one thing in common they all have more than two children the PWD minister Chandrika Prasad has four children jansankhya niyantran par nishchit roop se kanun bhi banna chahiye aur jansankhya niyantran ke kanun ko prabhavi dhang se lagu bhi hona chahiye mere char bachche nahi hain BJP MLA from Nanpara Madhuri Verma has six daughters. She admits she made a pilgrimage to the dargah in Ajmer seeking blessings to have a son. When her seventh child a son was born, she named him Ajmeri Verma after the Sufi saint whose tomb is located in Ajmer. Aur meri naam rakha hai hamare jaise apne khud khud chinta rahe to jahan jahan gaye ki ha bhai bidhai ji ke hamare ladka nahi hai to uske hisab se jahan gaye bhai अपनाशन डे and raise awareness on family planning the uttar pradesh vidhan sabha website that has personal details of all mlas says 
Of the 304 BJP MLAs, 152 have more than two children. One MLA has eight children. Eight MLAs have six children. 15 MLAs have five children. 43 MLAs have four children. 84 MLAs have three children and 102 MLAs follow the two-kid norm. Ironically, the number of these MLAs are targeting others for having too many children, like BJP MLA from Mirzapur, Ratnagar Mishra, who has six children himself. Our belief is that the Clearly, the debate on the population bill will have ramifications beyond the borders of Uttar Pradesh. With Kamal Khan and Harsha Kumari Singh, Joshua Chin for NDTV. So amazing political hypocrisy there. But moving now to the other big headline, the Chief Justices of India's strong comments on the sedition law, which is often used now against farmers, students, political activists, in fact, anyone the establishment doesn't agree with. The Chief Justice today asked that this is a colonial law used by the British against Mahatma Gandhi and others. Is it still necessary 75 years after independence? The Chief Justice also asked the Attorney General that the concern is over the functioning of institutions and how there is no accountability of the executive. The Centre now has to file a response. Hundred farmers booked for sedition for allegedly attacking the car of the Haryana Deputy Speaker. The first time in their almost seven-month protest against the farm laws that this charge has been used. Today came strong observations by the Chief Justice of India, N. V. Ramana, questioning the government why the British era sedition law should not be scrapped. Hearing petitions from the Editors Guild of India and others challenging its validity, the court asked the centre, is the law still necessary in our country after 75 years of independence? It is a colonial law used by the British to silence Gandhi and others. Our concern is misuse of the law and threat to functioning of institutions. Also, no accountability on the part of the executive. If police wants to fix someone, they invoke sedition law and people are scared. Chief Justice asked the government's top lawyer, government is repealing a number of old laws. Why is the government not looking into this law? The Chief Justice said, instead of cutting wood, the carpenter is cutting the forest itself. That's the effect of this law. The Attorney General replied, the law need not be struck down. Only some guidelines be set out so that the section meets its legal purpose. The Chief Justice shot back, if some party does not want to hear the voice of other party, they may use this law and implicate others and it is a serious question for individuals. We will examine the law. The Honorable Supreme Court's agreeing to examine the sedition law today is heartening, certainly to me as petitioner, but also to others who value democratic dissent and fundamental rights guaranteed by the Constitution. The National Crime Records Bureau data is in sync with the Chief Justice of India's remarks on conviction under sedition law. The number of sedition cases have increased by over 160% from 2016 to 2019. But the rate of conviction dropped to 3.3% in 2019 from 33.3% in 2016. Among those recently charged with sedition include filmmakers, a student activist, MP Shashi Tharoor, journalist Rajdeep Sardesai, Mrinal Pandey, Vinod Dua and Siddiq Kappan who has been in UP jail for over 9 months with no bail or trial in sight. Few other petitions filed by journalists challenging the sedition law are pending before a different bench. Now, all these petitions will be heard by the Chief Justice bench soon. Chief Justice strong observations is a message to the government that this law is not needed anymore. In New Delhi, Arunachalam Vaidyanathan, NDTV. Petitions there filed by the Editors Guild of India and also today by ex-Union Minister Arun Shori.
Meanwhile, news is coming in of the report given by the Human Rights Commission group, which is looking at post-poll violence in Bengal, where they have apparently recommended a CBI probe into the violence, saying in the report there has been an appalling apathy of the state. They recommended a CBI probe into grievous offences like murder and rape, adding that these cases must be tried outside West Bengal, where they see it as a manifestation of the law of the ruler instead of the rule of law. This report has been given in a sealed uh, uh, cover to the Calcutta High Court, but leading Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee to ask why has it been leaked, has this been done to defame the people of Bengal? Tell us, speak a single word, because I have a highest respect for court, that's why I'm not giving any opinion. Political party can give the political opinion, what BJP has done already, they have given their bias opinion, I am not, because I respect the court, I will abide by the court verdict. That's why I am not giving any opinion about Human Rights Commission because I know what the people who submitted this report. Moving to other news, well, this from Maharashtra and again the sniping within the Maharashtra ruling alliance. This time again from the state congress chief Nana Patole who said once again that NCB chief Sharad Pawar is the remote control of the alliance. He said he's saying it because of respect but Sharad Pawar clearly not seeing it that way as he has raised with central congress leaders. Why is it that Nana Patole keeps talking about problems in the alliance? Does the congress want to go it alone? Also interestingly, Sharad Pawar is currently meeting with the chief minister Udav Thakre. वो रिमोट कंट्रोल है शरद पवार साहब उसमें क्या दो मत है अरे बात सही है हम भी बड़े आदमी के विरोध में हम भी स्टेटमेंट नहीं देते लेकिन जो को भी बाहर के लोग हमारे पार्टी के बाहर के लोग जो भी कोई स्टेटमेंट कर रहे होंगे उन्हें अपने पार्टी में झाक के देखना चाहिए दूसरे तरफ उंगली दिखाने वाले लोग उनके घर पे या अंधेरा कितना है वो पहले देख लेना चाहिए ना ना हम हमारी तैयारी कर रहे हैं हमारी पार्टी का स्ट्रेटेजी है हम पूरे तरह से तैयार है well, let's look at markets now. The Sensex Nifty ending at record highs once again. The Sensex up by 255 points. The Nifty jumping 70 points again, closing at an all-time high. Today, also, the Reserve Bank Governor Shakti Kant Das has said that they're not changing the GDP growth rate projected by the RBI for the financial year 2022. It stays at 10.5%, saying we don't see any reason to revise the growth projection downwards. Well, an interesting fan has congratulated India's space research organization today. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk tweeted congratulating ISRO for conducting the third long duration hot test of the Vikas engine. That's a key part of the ambitious Gaganyaan mission, which will be a manned mission to space. He tweeted saying congratulations, accompanied with an Indian flag emoticon and the tweet is going viral.